everyone and welcome to the general hospital recap for november 8th as always don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps and also be a beauty and hit that bell down below so you get notified every time we upload a new video let's get right to it at general hospital chet is awake and alive chet doesn't want to talk though he's still on antibiotics he doesn't want to see his sister and finn says that amy is worried and he's pretty much gonna have to deal with it nathan comes in he heard about the od patient amy asks that he not arrest him and pulls nathan aside and that this is her brother that they're talking about this is chet and he got his hands on painkillers somewhere traveling to Port Charles and they don't know a lot though. And he's like, look, I'm only here to talk to Chet, not arrest him. Finn comes out of the room. Finn tells Amy that he's awake and stable. Amy runs into the room and hugs her brother and he wants her to get out. So she goes and then comes back. She's not leaving him. She knows he's going through a lot and it seems like he's going through survivor's guilt as well from the way he's talking. She has work so she will go but she'll be back. Nathan runs Amy down. Ma that's <laughs> not like with a car. I meant like he ran after her. So Nathan runs after Amy. No cars involved. Maybe if he knew what she did, she raised the money for his surgeries, he'd act different, but she says she doesn't want to tell him because she's afraid it would hurt his pride. At Crimson, Nina is looking over Maxie's article. She likes it and she's good if Nathan and Amy are good with it. And oh my goodness, the shade that General Hospital throws, right? So Maxie goes, you don't think I'm contributing to fake news? And Nina goes, no, it's not like the fate of our nation is hanging in the balance. <laughs> Almost be funny if it wasn't totally true. Nell comes into work and she gets a text that her phone account is past due and her phone will be shut off if she doesn't pay it. Maxie's stuff is on her desk and Nell's like, whose stuff is on my desk? And Maxie comes out and goes, good, you're finally here. We have to get to work. Maxie knows her, knows information about now. They've both been the subject of public gossip. So let's leave that be and not focus on it. Also, Nell will be assisting Maxie and Nina for now. And Maxie will be getting her own assistant eventually, but they're getting the corner office ready for her because she's gonna be the assistant executive assist editor, executive fashion editor, something like that. And also, please hang her coat up and get Maxie some stuff. Like, there's items that she needs, like letterhead and stuff like that. Nell goes in to talk to Nina. They have to have a conversation. Nina says that her and Maxie are going to have to figure out to coexist for now. And Nell asks for a raise. They've talked about it before, but she would have to wait for the year-end review, but she wants it a little sooner. Nell says that she's really strapped for cash. And then Nina says... I thought you were going to get a roommate to make up for expenses. And Nell says, I was, but that fell through at the last minute. So exactly how many people did she tell that her and Michael were moving in together after they had like a two sentence conversation about it in which nothing was agreed on? So Nina says that she'd love to give her a raise, but she can't with Aurora taking over financially they're on hold. For now, Nina will treat her to a cappuccino and when she gets back, go over Maxie's article. Maxie gives Nell her coffee order too, an ass. I love this so much. Nathan comes to see Maxie. He feels that he was unable to help his friend when his friend needed help. At Pizzullo's, Sunny and Carly touch base. They're dealing with Jason and getting him out of jail. They're on the phone, by the way. So Carly's not there. Diane is going to make a case that he had reasonable cause for the attack because of what he thought. Hi, Misha's. Let me take this off so Misha's can go. And Michael is there at Pizzullo's. Sunny fills him in and Michael's like, you're really sure that this guy's Jason. He knows when he'll meet him. <laughs> this is all a setup. Someone did this to Jason and this, you know, Port Charles Jason. Someone took Jason and replaced him with Sam's husband. Michael doesn't know what he'd say to Jason though, Steve Burton and Jason. He's been a second father and a brother to him and how could he justify himself to Jason that he thought this other person was him? And Sonny reminds him that this is Jason they're talking about, so you're not going to need to justify yourself. There's nothing to forgive. 
at the jail, Steve Burton Jason is staring down Klein. He wants more answers, and Klein says that he doesn't have any more answers. He says he couldn't find his client anyway. Steve Burton and Jason says, yes I can, and you're gonna help me. Steve Burton and Jason says he has friends, and then a guard comes down and says Klein made bail, so he doesn't have to be there anymore. Who paid it? And then Klein's like, you know what, I don't care, I'm free, whatever. Carly comes in and asks for some time with Steve Burton and Jason, and the guard says, okay, Mrs. Corinthos, and this is right in front of Klein. Carly tells Jason that Franco is reformed, or at least is pretending to be. He needs to focus on himself for now and getting his life back, and then he can do whatever he wants to Franco. Steve Burton and Jason doesn't want to put any pressure on Sam, and hi, hello, hi, you want to say hi? Say hi to your loyal subjects. Oh, she left. Bye, Mika. Carly tells him that she and Sam are friends now, like legit friends. They bonded in their grief, and if it weren't for Danny, Sam probably would have left town. Sam's husband intends to fight for her, and Steve Burton Jason doesn't want to engage and put Sam through that. To me, these are the signs that he is the Jason Morgan that we knew for so many years. Carly says, okay, one thing at a time. Right now, let's focus on Diane and Bale. They're thrilled to post his bail, which they are doing. She even shopped and got him some new clothes, and she's so excited. Plus, she had the desk sergeant throw out his old clothes, and he's like, oh my god, Carly, like, he's do it all. Like, he's just, he's so him, and I absolutely love it. At Anna's, Valentine came back to her house. He wants to help bring Cassie down what changed. He spins a story how this is a way to protect his daughter because this crisis knows no demographic, knows no, like, it can go after anyone. She's not buying it though, and she asks if Cassie provoked him. If they're doing this, then they really have to just do this. She needs all the information, all the names, taking the whole operation down. And she also needs to trust him, but she needs to know his motives. Valentine gets a call from Klein, he thanks him for posting his bail, and Valentine is like, I didn't post your bail, bye, don't call me again ever. And then we hear on the other end of the line, Klein say, oh no, let go of me, let go of me. Valentine is going to get Cassie to trust him and then betray her. It's going to get extremely dangerous. She wants to give him one final if you risk this operation, but he says don't. I'm risking everything to come to your side, so please don't threaten me. Someone's at the door. It's Finn. Valentine leaves. Finn wants back in on Anna's plan. He feels that he's like Roxy ever since Hayden left. He's been hiding out in his own little world. But there's a patient, a person who needs help. Anna gets it, but she doesn't need him anymore. She found another way, another way to do this. But he's like, I admitted I was wrong. Like, come on, throw me a bone here. Finn figures out Valentine is the other way, and he's not okay with that. Back at Pizzullo's, Klein is in Sonny's office, and he's like, OMG, you're Sonny Corinthos. Sonny wants information. Who was he providing his services for? Klein tries to turn this whole thing around that anonymity is expected. So by telling you who this person is, you would think less of me because I'm not being professional. And Sonny's like, okay, fair point, I get that. He can respect loyalty to a client, but now he wants to know about Klein tracking Steve Burton and Jason to Port Charles because that seems a little above and beyond just keep holding him and drugging him. And he says he was ordered to track him down. Who gave him the order? He says he doesn't know his name. His boss always contacts him. Sonny has Klein's phone, it's a burner phone, and they're gonna wait until it rings. And then they'll hear his boss's voice and Sonny will be able to recognize if it's anyone he knows. Klein just wants a fresh start. Says something about his friends, Jason and Ava, and Sonny clarifies that Ava is not his friend. And if anything, the work Klein did is not something Sonny approves of. Sonny says, let's ask his friend if Klein deserves a second chance. And then Steve Burton and Jason walks in, black shirt, black jacket, jeans, like five years never happened. At the Metro Court, Nell finds Michael at the restaurant. She's been worried about him. This Jason stuff, it, it's just, she can't imagine what he's going through. Sometimes it helps to talk. Oh, honey, please tell me you're not doing what I think you're doing because I think it's gonna make me a very happy person. 
she takes Michael's hand, sits at the table with him. She wants to be there for him and he keeps saying slash trying to say no. She'll never stop loving him. She wants to be there for him. Maybe they can help each other. They help each other. I'm sorry, this started with you wanting to help him, but now he can help you. Honey. Carly walks in and sees them, but stays away. Michael takes his beautiful hand away from her. She doesn't want to let go though. <laughs> and uh, he keeps letting her down easy. He doesn't want to hurt her feelings, but enough's enough. It's time to go their separate ways. And she's like, oh, you're right. I'm so sorry. Carly sits down with Michael after Nell leaves. She asks, because it looks like they had a fight. And he goes, M me and Nell are over. Yes, yes, yes. But he knows that this makes her happy. It does, but she's not happy that he's upset. And then Nell runs into Valentine. She's glad she ran into him. She needs help and she thinks he's just the person to help her. And now end scene. Anna wants Finn to be a doctor. <laughs> that That's all he needs to do. But he wants to do more. He sees a lot of himself in Chet. And Finn tells Anna that he has one outstanding test that he didn't give Cassie the results for. Anna is nervous. He has to be doing this on his own free will if he's going to do this because it's way too risky and dangerous. Anna isn't strong arming him. He's ready to take the risk. Amy checks in on sleeping Chet. She loves him. She's ever going to give up on him. Don't give up on himself. Nathan tells Maxie a friend of his needed help and he had no answers. He was useless and she says the fact that he cares counts. Nell is trying to tell Valentine that by Nina giving her a raise, Nina will be asserting her autonomy and it's actually going to help her with this Aurora transfer. And also, if he doesn't help her, she'll blow up his marriage. <laughs> you, Honey, I don't care how manipulative and amazing you think you are. If you are doing this to a Cassidyne, you have no brains in your head, okay? Especially since he had already threatened her once. Michael tells Carly that she was right about now. She is sorry to see him hurting though, and she tells him that he can talk to someone else if he doesn't want to talk to her. Steve and Jason is having a little bit of fun. You know, this whole thing with Klein, it wasn't personal. Klein was doing a job. And just seeing Steve and Jason and Sonny together, it's just, it's, it's so great. It just really is. They want a name, and Klein says he doesn't know. Like, he honestly doesn't know. He would tell them if he knew because he knows that the two of them would destroy this person and then he'd be in the all clear so it would actually it would work out better for him if he gave them a name but he doesn't know and then the burner phone rings all right so that is it for the ace i will see you a little later for the ninths and tenths which is going to be on in 15 minutes i will see you then and i hope you have a great day okay bye